Hi, yeah, I'm Makoto. Uh, let me thank you very much for letting me to uh, talk about ENS. ENS uh, stands for Ethereum Name Service, and I usually talk at like Ethereum Blockchain Community Conference, and uh, I'm aware that this is kind of uh, just beyond uh, blockchain Ethereum. So I'm trying to do the quick introduction of what Ethereum, what uh, ENS is. Is that like uh, uh, if you have any cryptocurrency? Uh, in this case, Ethereum wallet, you usually have this kind of hexadecimal address, which uh, you can send or uh, receive uh, cryptocurrencies. And usually this, well, this is quite hard to basically remember or even tell to the other people. So what we offer is a, a very simple naming service. For example, matoken.is is at my uh, ENS name. So that I, uh, if you want to send me some ETH or any like ERC20 tokens, uh, you can uh, send to my token .es. So th this is a very gist of what ENS does. However, uh, yeah, and uh, we've been, uh, we launched back in 2017, so almost like four years. And uh, now uh, we have near, yeah, over 250, uh, wallets, exchanges, and uh, various uh, dApps. We call it dApps in Ethereum space, which is kind of equivalent on the web uh, in, uh, I think, IPFS world. Uh, many uh, yeah, application supports. And uh, yeah, what, what ENS underneath is, ENS is not part of the blockchain itself, but it's actually built as with a smart contract, which is a unique feature of Ethereum, where you can uh, you can uh, write a program 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 which controls the flow of money, and uh, famous application in Ethereum is something like an automated uh, market exchange or like some lending platform. But we use the same uh, basic program language to build a basic name service, which is uh, one of the probably simplest form of smart contract. It's just like key value like a dictionary. So we have something called ENS registry where you ask for the, what's the uh, address of, for example, foo.es. And what it does return is actually, rather than just returning the uh, crypto address straight, we return something called resolver, which is in charge of uh, uh, actually storing the record. And uh, in the first example I mentioned, uh, it, it, it returned, the, in this example, it returned the same address, but this resolver is very extensible. Anyone can write your own resolver and they add support. So it's, it's uh, really extensible. And in, our, in today's uh, like talk, I want to uh, basically introduce kind of two different use cases of uh, different record types we, you can store and make use of for the other cryptocurrencies and for the web purpose. And also I wanted to extend a bit of idea of the Ethereum uh, address, not just for kind of wallet, uh, but more as a kind of public key infrastructure. Oh, I, I found a typo, yeah, anyway. And also we have a very small price for the five best project to integrate with ENS. And uh, you can just do no more integration of, of just like you're doing the name lookup, but like uh, I think I, a couple of ideas uh, throughout this talk so that it hopefully can inspire you to add uh, into your project. And uh, first is other cryptocurrencies. So yeah, ENS, no, most people's assumption is that you can only kind of map into the same address, but in fact, uh, it actually supports over 200 different uh, crypto addresses. So uh, one use case is, is that, for example, about three, four months ago, uh, there is a, you know, like there's a, a second outbreak in India, uh, COVID, and uh, there's a guy, uh, yeah, this Sandeep, who, who uh, is a founder of Polygon uh, chain, uh, one of the kind of side chain of the Ethereum, has uh, basically asked for the donation and saying like, hey, can you donate to, and then like to reach out the, as, like, to, to as many, different kind of audience that he put like, hey, just do it on Ethereum, address this, BTC address this, Doji address this, Tron address this. Then like it didn't actually even fit into the, you know, uh, the tweet. And so what we actually reached out and they made it together is just uh, set up the uh, 
ENSM for COVID relief dot is where we put like all these different uh, addresses of the EC, uh, ESP, PTC, LTC, Dodge. Yeah, and uh, it does also support Filecoin, FIL. So like if you want to do in a hack, like if you want to basically want to some system to send send uh, in a Filecoin, you could actually use ENS as well. Uh, but just to bear in mind, like this is a store uh, name storage. So like if you, uh, people has to send a Filecoin, uh, you, you are, that has to integrate Filecoin wallet, I think. Uh, and the second use case is the web uh, use case that, uh, yes, we not just storing crypt addresses, you can uh, put so-called content hash, which is defined in the EIP 1577. And the majority of the time people put like IPFS, IPNS, uh, CIDs. Uh, but you can also put other uh, kind of di distributed uh, file system like Swarm, SIA, and also you can put on your address uh, or anything which actually uh, supported in a so-called multi-codec standard, which is just one gigantic text uh, text file. And it has like, I think not hundred, but quite a lot of them. But in our uh, apps site, we only kind of support all these four. And, uh, if you, I'm assuming the most of audience here knows how to kind of upload asset into the IPFS and get content ID. If you are aware of it, you can just go to our dashboard and then, uh, you know, copy and paste uh, the address there. But like, if you are more like traditional web two developer, uh, what I do recommend is use a site, a uh, site called Fleek, which is a, a kind of CI, a continuous, integration uh, service provider, but they, as part of uh, basically deployment, usually there's a, you know, normal flow is that like, you know, if you march uh, your branch into master, it automatically keeping kind of deployment flow, they not, uh, natively supports uh, ENS. So you can, and they actually set the uh, IPNS hash for you. Uh, okay. And uh, once it's been set, uh, first use case is if uh, you have any ENS supported browser such as Opera, uh, Status, which is a kind of uh, Ethereum crypto wallet and the messaging system. And also for, uh, I think Brave and uh, uh, Chrome, uh, you can install Firefox and you can type like, for example, ENS.is and it goes to this site. But I am aware that like, you know, not everybody has like MetaMask or you, you know, use uh, Opera. So we do kind of, this is a work we kind of did uh, thanks to the grants from the uh, protocol lab is that uh, basically our colleague extended a DNS server called EastDNS, so which is served for .eth link, which we own that like uh, if you go to, if you kind of append the, uh, dot link after so like ens is link it actually basically shows uh redirected not redirect it solves the ips underneath and all this is done uh thanks to the cloudflare uh, underneath so that we don't we don't have to handle the, the huge traffic and the stuff and uh, yes and uh, yeah just to know this only uh, applies to ipfs ipns not for uh, other file uh, distributed file system. And then, but like then you might think, oh, okay, so ENS, so East Link is owned by you guys, so it's kind of centralized. But again, like, you know, IPFS uh, gateway, I, like IPNS.io is just one of the gateway. So you, you probably know that there are many different gateways. And uh, actually, IPFS gateway natively supports ENS, so that like you can go to, uh, you know, ENS dash east.pns web, oh, sorry, yeah, IPNS web link. Or if you go to other like a gateway, you can do is ens.east. One thing is like, if you go to that web link, because uh, you can add IP ENS as a part of the uh, IPFS address, but because you don't, uh, they replace the dot with dash, that's only gotcha. Uh, yeah, and the third, last part is, uh, a, a bit abstract, but like I'm trying to explain, uh, is that 
So not just for Ethereum, but like it's kind of side effects of like, you know, popularity of crypto for the last few years is, is that like actually it's not just gave people wealth, but it actually gave people a public private key. This is a tweet by uh, Bradley, uh, who, who is my colleague at ENS, and he said like one of the most, yeah, is that private public public private key. And if you're not familiar with what it means is that, and that for example, on the right side there, the CRM address, the address is actually the derived from the public key, which is, you know, hash of the uh, public key, which is also have sorry, private key. So by uh, not the CRM address itself, but if you look at the transaction, you, you can basically derive the public key. So you could use the same thing as a kind of key signing, which is kind of interesting. You know, since like, I don't know, 1890s, many people try to kind of promote the use of like, you know, email encryption or using the digital signature. But even though people now, some people use it, it's not widely used. However, with this rise of crypto suddenly, you know, gave the public key, private key through crypto addresses to the millions of people. And it was the, one of the important thing is like, you know, uh, your key is, you know, no one manages your key. So you really have to take care of all, all the, you know, make sure private key is not like, you know, given to anyone else, that kind of stuff. And then people learn very quickly as soon as they have size, sizable uh, chunk of wealth under their wallet. And also like uh, recently there's a thing called uh, non-fungible tokens getting very popular. And uh, many like people who has nothing to do with crypt cryptocurrencies, like, you know, artists jumping in into the, this NFT bandwagon. And the, more, the first kind of misunderstanding everybody thinks is like, oh, uh, you put the image, my art into blockchain. Actually, that's not true. Most of the time people put that into IPFS, but what, Blockchain or Ethereum offer is the fact that you, who holds a, a public private key, signs this digital art that this is kind of minted by me. Uh, it doesn't prove it, but like it's just like a you sign it. You, you know that that's a, a big difference. So it's people start using not just for the you know uh, coin transfer, but basically using to prove their work. They they already start using it. And uh, then by extending this idea, uh, Bradley kind of uh, suggested like, even if you don't use cryptocurrencies, you should still use like a, a Ethereum wallet uh, just to sign in so that, so that they can just sign that like, I am in the owner of this public key and just use this Ethereum address as an identity. So that this is a kind of the idea uh, he tweeted, it got very popular, uh, yes. I think I'm running out of time. I only have two minutes. So this part I, I go through very quickly. And uh, that, yeah, last bit part I'm gonna, going to introduce is like, a, I've been all talking about .eth address, which is kind of decentralized one, which only exists outside of the internet, which you have to register. But, you know, many of the brands name are already kind of squatted. So if you like Amazon, Google, it's all squatted by, uh, you know, not by the brown folder, but like squatters, that if these people want to make use of this kind of signing capability or just as a quick wallet, uh, they already, they can't use the name they want. But in that case, we actually provide a ways to use a uh, domain name, internet DNS name as ENS name. So in this example, uh, you are actually this is islab.xyz, which is the internet address. And suddenly it does, tie into uh, Ethereum address. And I tried to explain this, but like, I, I think I'm running out of time, so, so I'm going to uh, skip it. But like, uh, if you want to, but key important thing is uh, you can do it in a non-trusted manner. Uh, we have something called DNS like Oracle as a smart contract. So you could actually use this smart contract and make useful for whatever the project you want to do. And as a summary, so I went to, through some of the usage of ENS outside of kind of Ethereum space. So even though you, even if you are not working on like blockchain Ethereum directly, you could, these things you could still 
do. And uh, if you just choose as a top five project, you could you know, build bounties. Like in one, uh, basically add login with Ethereum into your site so that you know, people can, can uh, just sign the signature. And the uh, important thing is this is just a sign in a message. So you, these people don't have to have uh, Ether or any cryptocurrencies. And also, yeah, tie your internet domain, like DNS name into basically pub, pub private key, which I just showed using that, uh, you know, using your do internet domain tiny DNS name. Then also, if you do support uh, the same address into your project, uh, you could actually add other cryptocurrencies. And the problem, this is the most, last part is most common usage for this hackathon participant is that uh, I assume you use IPFS somewhere, and then once it's added, then you just point to, and if you use IPFS to host the website, you can point to ENS name uh, using the content hash. And uh, so that's it. And if you want to have more, uh, find out more about how exactly you want to use uh, ENS, there's a, a docs ens.domains, and we have a Discord channel, and we are scheduling the kind of interactive q and session next Monday. We don't have the time yet, but like just stay tuned. So like, you know, just dive into ENS this weekend. If you have any questions, just, you know, bring it to me and then we can just talk about it. Thank you very much.